How in the world could an annoying alarm clock change your life? Let me show you. You know this feeling. You just woke up and the next thing you see is your phone in your hands. You check your new emails from work, read the news, find out that World War 3 is around the corner and scroll through the lives of people you don't even know. After 30 minutes of mindlessly staring at your phone, you finally get your ass up to start your day. You brush your teeth, wash your face and look in the mirror. But suddenly a notification is telling you that there's something more important right now. Just like that, you get sucked back into the rabbit hole of social media where you spend the majority of your morning, unconsciously staring at your screen in search of that next dopamine hit. You feel drained, unmotivated and hate yourself for wasting the last two hours. You spend another eight unproductive hours in front of your computer screen until you fall back into your bed. You're tired and you feel like a piece of shit, but still your hand finds its way to your phone where you get lost in the world of algorithms until your body finally shuts off. So about two weeks ago, my phone got stolen by a pickpocket here in Cape Town. Sucks, right? Yes and no. As the delivery times for a new phone were more than three days, I was forced to spend a couple of days without a phone. Through this experience, I realized once again how these small computers became such a crucial part of our everyday lives and how strongly we depend on our phones and everything we do. But after a few days of getting used to it, I have to say that besides my missing alarm clock in the morning and my lacking navigation skills, I actually enjoyed having no phone. I started to feel more and more present and less stressed than usual because I wasn't always reachable and didn't overload my brain with so much information. So after enjoying my accidental four-day phone detox, my new phone arrived in the mail. And guess what? Faster than I could see, I was back where it all started. For this reason, I came up with an idea. An idea to once and for all get rid of these sleepy mornings and these late nights. Yes, I bought an alarm clock. Besides this one, I ordered three digital alarm clocks for me, my friend Gabriel and our new flatmate Maxi, who by the way is one of the funniest guys I know. The plan is to replace our phones with these alarm clocks for the next five days in the hopes of lowering our screen time. I'm actually gonna stick to the retro alarm clock for now. Alrighty guys, so one alarm clock for you and one for you. Let's go! <laughs> Dude, I'm anxious. Without my phone, I don't know. <laughs> well, I myself am actually really looking forward to do this sort of experiment, but in order to have some sort of measure of how successful it is, I actually wanted to check what your screen times are for the last week. It's not good. <laughs> it's approximately four hours. Oh, it's 12 hours of Twitter. I'm addicted. <laughs> okay, what about you? Mine is, I think it's more. Yeah, 438 is the average. Okay, so I have four hours and seven minutes. We're gonna check them again when we're done with this experiment. This is foreign. I don't even know how to use this. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time we used an alarm, bro? Like it's crazy, it's like crazy. I think like... the last time I had an alarm was like seven years ago. Yeah, same. <laughs> there was basically only one simple rule for this experiment. Keep your phone outside your bedroom from the moment you go to bed until leaving in the morning for breakfast. After giving the boys a quick alarm clock tutorial, eating dinner together and watching some NBA, we all put our phones into the cupboard in our living room and went to bed. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that sound is not gonna work for me. <laughs> the alarm is so stressful. <laughs> I tried reaching for my phone, nothing is there. It feels very weird. But yeah, that means there's just one thing to do. <sighs> Stick to the morning routine. Let's go. So I guess we all can agree that each morning there are specific things which just need to be done in order to get started with our day. You gotta select the clothes you wanna wear today and dress up. You gotta brush your teeth and put your hair in an acceptable shape. And if you don't want your life to be a mess, you better also make your bed like your mommy once told you. I'm already experiencing the first effect. I mean, now it is 7.25, fully showered. I'm ready to start the day. And <laughs> normally I would still be on Twitter, still lying in my bed. Everything starts way faster. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. 
All right, so the first thing I actually just realized is that I need my phone in order to meditate because I'm using sort of like a guided meditation thing with an app. And I usually like meditate for 15 minutes each day on that chair each morning. But yeah, as I don't have my phone in my bedroom, I probably have to switch it to after breakfast. First time doing a meditation without looking at Instagram beforehand. That's, uh, that's how it should be. Done with the morning routine. This alarm clock is gonna make such a big difference. <laughs> I'm enjoying the sunset. The sunset, nice. Uh, sun surprise. <laughs> Normally he would still sleep an hour or so. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty guys, how was the first morning? Now everything is a little bit slower, you know? My brain isn't used to it yet. I, I experience everything differently and it sounds like I'm on drugs, but um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's like the first time doing the routine properly, you know, except for the camera in between. But like usually it's like one thing, cold shower, then phone, then brushing your teeth, then phone, then meditation, then phone. <laughs> and this time it's just one after the other, super efficient. It was awesome. Back in the matrix. Back in the matrix. <laughs> Everybody's quiet. I mean, look at this. Look at all of those messages. It's kind of crazy. So before I'm actually gonna check anything on my phone, I'm first gonna meditate so that my head is not sort of like clouded by all of these notifications right away. The periods where we usually spend most time on our phones are both the mornings and the evenings. And to be honest, both of these times are probably the worst to look at our screens. I think that the way you start your morning sets the tone for the rest of the day. The first few actions you take every single day are the ones that really impact your presence, your mood, your focus, and also your overall motivation to tackle the day. By looking at your phone as the first thing in the morning, you expose your mind to everything else but yourself. I mean, isn't it weird to look at a photo of a friend on the other side of the world before acting actually looking at yourself in the mirror. I already said it in another video, but I'm gonna say it again. I think that it is very, very important to start your day in your own life and not in somebody else's life. And that's what we do if we look at our phones first thing. I mean, by staring at your screen in the first 10 seconds of your day, it doesn't even give you the chance to appreciate the fact that you're well and alive and that this could be an amazing day, but instead you just get lost in the busyness of the internet. I guess this is another morning. Good morning, day two. Oh. So I gotta say that the new alarm clock is so much better. The sound of it is okay. It's still not great, but it's definitely better than the other piece of shit. Today I was feeling a real urge to grab my phone. I had this feeling, okay, where's my phone? Where's my phone? I wanna, I wanna touch it. But, well, there is no phone today. I was expecting the second morning to be just as good as the first one, but somehow there were different thoughts that kept me from being present. One thing that I gotta admit is that I am still sometimes thinking about my phone. Um, I mean, obviously I don't have my phone with me, I'm not looking at it, which already makes me feel more present while I'm just getting like started with my day. But I have to say that there still somehow is the urge to check my phone. I mean, the first thing that I thought about when I was waking up today was where is my phone and what things can I check? Which is just crazy because it just shows like how deep and hardwired this connection between us and our phones actually is that I'm not able to blend it out immediately. So I hope that it kind of like disappears over the next couple of days. I guess we're just going to see, but now I'm actually just heading for breakfast. One cool thing that happened was that all three of us actually prepared our breakfast at the same time. Usually we all used to eat our breakfast at different times depending on how long we were stuck on our phones, but as we now all strictly stick to our morning routine, we were able to have breakfast together while chatting with each other. I had a strong urge to grab my phone when waking up. Same man. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday it was okay, you know, but today it was like <laughs> I was waking up, clicking the alarm clock, my hand was searching the phone and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? <laughs> Yo, that's crazy because I actually just talked about the same thing. Ah, really? Because yesterday it didn't happen for me as that well, was... but today it was like the first thing I was thinking about is just like, where's my phone? What can I check right now? Yeah. It's a weird feeling because it's automated. You can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're just slapping just your like, hand. Yeah, you're just like, no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so how does a behavior like grabbing our phones become automatic and why do we choose to pick them up so often in the first place? Our brains automatically connect our phones with the infinite potential of knowledge, entertainment and also social validation through social media. There's literally always something happening on the internet at any given moment and especially the content which is constantly being recommended to you by the algorithms of social media is the main reason why you can't seem to put down your phone. We all know how the Instagram explore page, the YouTube recommended page and TikTok as a whole have an infinite amount of content that keeps you hooked. I mean these companies literally invest billions of dollars into making their platforms more and more addictive in order to keep your attention. Because your attention equals more time spent on their platforms, equals larger audiences for their advertisers, equals more money for them. This fear of missing out on something new is the trigger which leads us to pick up our phones over and over again. But there's actually something else that makes our behaviors automatic. And that is the hijacking of our deeply rooted reward system. It's as easy as that. If we feel rewarded for doing something, we're going to do it again. And if there's no rewards, we're not going to do it again. It's basically the same as with junk food or with video games and even drugs. It's the high calories, it's the different levels, it's the high of a cocaine trip that gives your brain the dopamine hits needed to do it again, even though it is clear to us that this is detrimental to our mental and physical well-being. And in the case of social media, these rewards are even more powerful because the rewards that you get on these platforms are unpredictable. See, when you open up Instagram in the morning, you simply don't know what to expect. How many likes has my new photo? How many people commented on it? What kind of video is going to be on my explore page? This is what makes social media exactly the same as a slot machine in a casino where you play to get that unpredictable reward. That's why our decision to pick up our phones is not actually a decision anymore. It's a compulsive behavior which we don't even think about. We just do it. And in the mornings, it's even easier for us to follow that compulsive behavior because the first step is already done. You turn off your alarm, you grab your phone, and all you need to do is one single tap in order to get lost in the algorithms of social media. So as you see, our toxic relationship with social media can be quite dark. and it is real. But on the other side, it is undeniable that technology can also be an incredible tool to improve our lives for the better. It all just comes down to how you use your devices. I, for example, use my phone and my laptop primarily to broaden my knowledge and learn about new topics. So for this video and basically everything that I just talked about, I read the book guides to digital minimalism by Cal Newport on a service called Shortform. Before you skip the sponsored section, please hear me out because Shortform has had an insane impact on the way I learn about new topics and I believe that it can do the same for you. Shotform makes the world's best guides to non-fiction books in the areas of self-improvement, productivity, philosophy and much more. It allows you to understand a book in a more organized, simple and efficient way. I'm purposely not using the term book summary because Shotform book guides go way beyond that. For each guide, you'll find a one-page summary which concisely and comprehensively covers the main concepts of a book. But then you can dive deeper with the chapter guides which provide insightful analysis and connect ideas of the author to other experts in the field. And to help reflect on the ideas of a book and retain information, Shortform provides interactive exercises after each chapter. Whether using the web version or the mobile app, there is also an available audio feature. They publish new book guides and articles every week and their subscribers get to vote on the books they cover next, which I think is really cool. If you sign up through my link shortform.com slash Nicholas, you will receive five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% on the annual subscription, which basically gives you access to thousands of books for the price of one book a month. So feel free to check out Shortform and their book guides to digital minimalism because I know that you're gonna love it. Compared to the mornings, the evenings had a very different feeling to them. Keeping my phone outside the room I sleep in allowed me to take the time to properly wind down and work through my thoughts before going to sleep. So let's put some light here. How do the evenings feel? I think that there is actually a significant difference between the mornings and the evenings because in the mornings, I feel like checking what's happening right now. I kind of have this sort of like fear of missing out. I want to see what's new. Well, in the evenings, it's more sort of this boredom because there's just nothing happening and I'm just waiting to get tired, you know? Over the last like two days, I realized this sort of like boredom is something that can be super, super nice and something 
something that is very, very valuable because we need this sort of time for our brains to actually process what happened throughout the day and to just basically take the time to reflect on our lives. Yesterday, I, I had some really insightful thoughts that I normally don't have when I'm laying here in bed because usually I'm just kind of like glued to my phone all the time. And then at some point I just get super tired. I put my phone away and I fall asleep. But now when I'm just laying in bed and I don't have anything distracting me, it feels like I have some sort of me time. Uh, it's freaking weird to say me time because like a phone is not another person, right? But Somehow, I guess it is. It is this sort of device where you feel a connection to another person through social media, where you have instant access to entertainment. Just having that thing available makes you spend less time with yourself, if that makes sense. I gotta say the main thing for me probably with not having the phone in my bedroom is that I go to bed in time. Like that's the main thing. I do the routine properly, which takes one hour, uh, brushing my teeth, taking my vitamins, and also meditating for 45 five minutes but then I just go to bed when it's time to go to bed and that just makes sure that I have proper sleep and then can wake up properly on the next day. The evening basically is like a creative bomb in my head. My mind lately kind of exploded with different ideas, different ideas about my business, different ideas about my videos, different ideas about my future even which I never really experienced before and I think my brain has now the ability to think about different topics which were kind of buried in my unconscious which are slowly but surely getting in my into my mind or my consciousness just because I'm not distracted in the evening and I have these one to two hours just on my own thinking about things that I really care about. Alrighty let's get some good sleep then. I think by now we all know that the blue light from our screens has a bad impact on our sleep, but it's not only the blue light. Also the overflow of information forces our brain to process these thoughts before being able to properly shut down and sleep. So ultimately staring at our phones before closing our eyes has two negative impacts on our sleep, blue light and information overload. And honestly, a good sleep is freaking important. I can't state it enough because a good sleep directly impacts how well you're resting on the next day which then also impacts your focus your mood your presence and everything else which ultimately just means that like spending time on your phone in both the evenings and the mornings just always reinforces itself and leads you into a downward spiral From day four on, we became more and more used to wake up without our phones. I slowly forgot about my fear of missing out on what's happening in the world and Maxi set a new record for his morning routine. Ready to go and <laughs> I just set a new record guys. It's only 7.13. As you can see, he was very proud of it. <laughs> Normally I would listen to music while doing everything in the morning, so I gotta imagine it, you know? While Gabriel was on the verge of being enlightened, Maxi had the morning of his lifetime. This is the first time I'm really enjoying sunrise here without phone, just with my morning coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, look at this. You can scroll through Twitter or Instagram as long as you want, but you can't get this on fucking social media. No. Let's see what happened in the world. Two new messages. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Nothing important, to be honest. Throughout the days, we became a lot more aware about our phone usage. After quickly replying to messages and checking our main apps, we got going with our work day. Important, don't work with your phone next to you, okay? So what we are doing, we have a special dedicated place to put our phones in. If you constantly have your phone next to you while working, you also get the notifications and you just can't get into the focus mode and uh, work like in a really deep state. So down here, you gotta put airplane mode and Let's get started with work, guys. Spending less time on our phones not only impacted our mornings and evenings, but also had a significant influence on our mental clarity during the day. We generally okay. felt more rested and were able to pull through with the different to-dos we set for the day. I was able to work multiple hours at a time without being pulled out of my flow and the urge to check our phones slowly disappeared. For this reason, we were able to focus our minds 100% on the present moment rather than thinking about something we saw on our screens a couple of minutes ago. And I gotta admit, that was really nice. After enjoying our last evening together, it was time for the last day of our challenge. Go 
Good morning. It's day five. <sighs> I'm getting used to the routine. That's amazing. I would say that last evening definitely was the peak of this whole experience because last night I was just laying here outside on the balcony. I was staring into the night sky and I was deeply reflecting about my life. What things are going wrong? What things are going right? Is this really the way I want to live? And the realizations that I had during this time were insane. I just saw things that I didn't see before and I decided to commit to big changes which are going to happen over the next couple of months. Can't tell you too much about it, but I think it's just funny because I've been doing experiments like this for a long time. I've been doing a social media detox for 30 days. I've been doing a dopamine detox for seven days. And it was always by the end of these experiments where I had the deepest insights and where I decided to fundamentally change something about my life. I would say that those experiments where I just like stay off my phone for a longer time really led me to the most critical junctures in my life. By the end of my dopamine detox, that was actually the moment where I decided that I want to move abroad, that I want to move here to Cape Town. And honestly, this has been the best decision I ever made. And I mean, if we compare this experiment to the other ones, it's funny because the other ones were actually quite intense and very strict, but this one, I just bought a freaking alarm clock. And I honestly have the feeling that it has such a positive impact on my life, which is crazy. I think if there's one thing this experiment showed me once again, it's just that for the last couple of months, I have been distracted. I've been distracting myself with my phone and keeping it away from me really led to very, very positive changes. After replacing our phones with an alarm clock for five days, it was time to see whether or not it had an impact on our screen time. Alrighty guys, the moment of truth has come. What is your screen time? Let's check. It's way better. <laughs> it's One like and a half hours. <laughs> One and a half hours average screen time. Holy shit. Let's go. <laughs> Mine is two hours 30. Yeah. Okay. So it's still way better. That's a crazy <laughs> improvement, eh? And it is one Dude. hour 30. One hour 29. Holy shit. On the, oh, we have on the spot the on same. On the spot the same. <laughs> It is honestly crazy. All of us had a screen time of more than four hours before like doing this experiment, which just shows like how much time you actually spend in the mornings and in the evenings. Mm. Are you guys going to keep the alarm clock? Yes, for sure. I honestly think we have actually less screen time, not because we spend all the time in the evening, but because of the better sleep, the day is way better. Because the routine starts good, the day starts good, and then the day is just overall better. So I think that's the main reason, so definitely keeping it up, for sure. I'm gonna keep doing it. I mean, it's such a small change, but but uh, it made such a big impact, so I'm gonna keep doing it, guys. This dumb little experiment turned out to have a much bigger impact on my life than I first expected. I realized how important it is to start and end your days in presence and what a big impact it has on your overall well-being and your mental clarity. I think it's a step in the right direction that we nowadays have different features to help us reduce our screen time. The option to turn off notifications, the different focus modes and do not disturb function, and the ability to set time limits for specific apps. And all of these features are great, but with a few clicks you can regain access to everything again, which is simply not enough to break an unhealthy relationship with our phones. I believe that physical distance to these devices is the only solution to actually take back control over our lives and focus on the things that are important to us. Only if our phones are not in arm's reach, the friction is high enough to value our lives over the short-term dopamine hits of these devices. And for this reason, I urge all of you out there to buy an alarm clock right now. Because trust me, you won't regret it. Alrighty, I think that once again, this was a really, really cool experiment. Let me know in the comments how you liked it. And if you want to see something else like this, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And also make sure to check out the channels of those two guys. He's creating videos about Bitcoin and he's creating videos about self-development as well. You will find links to their channels in the description. And then I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye bye.